Good morning, everyone, or hello and welcome. It's wonderful to be here with you at the International Virtual Exchange Conference. And today we're going to talk about intercultural collaboration, engaging distance students in virtual activities. Our team will begin by introducing ourselves and our involvement with the Next Gen Coders Network Project. My name is Corinne Ringette, and I'm an Associate Professor of Technical Communication at IUPUI in Indianapolis, Indiana. I helped with co-development of the Next Gen Coders Network curriculum and integrated it into a course I teach at IUPUI. And that's it. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining today's presentation. My name is Natsnek Renegus. I am a senior program associate at World Learning with the Global Development Team. I also serve as one of the NGCN part project managers, and I have the opportunity of working directly with our partner organizations based in Kuwait, Iraq, and the Palestinian territories. Haley? Hello, everyone. My name is Haley. Like Natsnet, I work at World Learning as a project manager for NGCN, um, but I was managing the student side of things and working with the facilitators and the students themselves. Rob? Hi, everyone. My name is Rob Elliott. I'm a teaching professor of computer and information technology at IUPUI, and I fed students into NGCN from the uh, American side. And in most of my courses, I actually use this as an extracurricular activity. I didn't integrate it directly into any of my courses. Um, unfortunately, Matt and Timothy can't be here with us today, but they are our wonderful colleagues from the University of Maryland College Park, um, who developed the Jamboards that we'll be talking about later. So first, um, we just wanted to give you an overview of what NGCN was and how it worked. Um, so the Next Gen Coders Network, or NG NGCN for short, um, brought together multidisciplinary university students and young professionals from Iraq, the Palestinian territories, one semester Kuwait, um, and the US for a virtual exchange to learn how to code. Um, so participants completed 10 weeks of independent curriculum on Canvas and then also partook in weekly meetings and group chats um, with their teammates over WhatsApp and a video conferencing software of their choice, although we recommended Google Meet. Um, and then the final project for those teams was to collaborate on a website or mobile application um, that would solve a grand challenge in their community. So some example projects that participants made um, included one on food insecurity in Indiana, um, a couple on refugees, um, quite a few honestly on, on, on mental health resources for students, which is good work, but also kind of sad. Um, and then even a couple on sports diplomacy. So it could really be about whatever students wanted it to be about. Um, and then supporting that is the independent curriculum, um, which prepared them with both the soft skills that they needed to work together effectively, such as um, intercultural communication and project management, um, as well as the technical skills that they needed to make their project, including design thinking and coding modules. Um, actually, our coding module could be customized depending on the level of the student um, and what they were interested in. And then teams were also assisted by a near peer facilitator um, who guided the participants through the program and provided mentorship. So over five semesters, we served 431 alumni um, and also we were funded by the student initiatives. Thank you, Haley. Um, so the program was hosted on Canvas for virtual exchange. Um, Sorry, I'm just blanking on, sorry. So yes, Canvas Learning uh, Management System, which a lot of universities and colleges are now using due to the um, current pandemic. Um, we realized that it is a very accessible platform for all the participants, whether they're in the MENA region or the United States. Participants completed asynchronous tasks for each module over, Oops, so sorry. No worries at all. Um, so like Natsunet was saying, we had, um, Canvas as the primarily asynchronous curriculum content delivery. IUPUI used Canvas as a learning management system, and since World Learning also had access to Canvas, that seemed to make the most sense for us to use. And we had three main goals for the NGCN project. One was to facilitate the virtual learning space that helped participants accomplish their goals. The second was to help participants develop technological literacy and intercultural dialogue skills. And the third was to foster an inclusive collaboration experience in those diverse teams. So we really wanted to create that culture of collaboration. With those goals in mind, using Canvas was great because it was super user-friendly 
It had excellent help guides and we were able to break everything up into those weekly modules that Haley mentioned, including the intercultural technical communication and that fun final module that was the choose your own adventure coding module. And that way, those who knew nothing about coding could still participate and learn something about programming, but those with more advanced skills could go even deeper. To facilitate the collaboration asynchronously, the Canvas discussion boards were really useful. And to foster an inclusive experience, we also used WhatsApp, Zoom, Google Jamboards, and Google Meet for them both asynchronous and synchronous interaction and collaboration. And we'll talk more about that shortly. Um, first, here's an example of a quote from one of the students who recognized how useful Canvas was. He said, about technical skills, I'm really proud of myself to be able to learn about web design in a short time. And I really love it. Also, the way that use Canvas, it was really helpful to make progress. Now, Natsunet will tell you about some of the other interactions and communication tools. Thank you very much, Corey. I guess I was too excited this morning. <laughs> so um, as a way to supplement the activities that were done asynchronously on Canvas, participants also worked um, synchronously together in their group projects using WhatsApp, as well as other video conferencing applications such as Google Meet or Zoom. So within WhatsApp, participants uh, were, were based in, were formed in group chats that they developed to plan and uh, work together on their final presentations. We had also an overall project um, chat for uh, facilitated group cultural discussions, which were led by um, the lead facilitators as well as their mentors. As you see in the picture here is an example of a culture exchange that took place. The question asked, who is your uh, STEM icon? And participants had the opportunity to share about their cultural icons that they had based in their cultural free region. And that way that other participants can learn about um, different people in different contexts. And for each week, uh, participants also met once, uh, once a week for an hour with their project teams um, via Google Meet or Zoom as a way to lead on to their final presentation at the end of the program after 10 weeks. Um, there was a question I just wanted to address too. Were you part of these groups? Yes, we were. So the World Learning Project Manager, so Haley and I were part of the groups just to see how things were going, but also to support the mentors. And we also trained the mentors to lead the facilitated discussions as well as the group um, calls. Thank you, Heba, for that question. And then a quote regarding the, um, oh, sorry, Haley. And here's a quote regarding the um, WhatsApp group chat from Mustafa, an Iraqi participant. Um, they stated, the culture exchanging was the best part in WhatsApp group chat and learned about Palestinian food and famous musicals in the U.S. and even in Kurdistan. And we also talked about idioms, which I like how you guys in the U.S. said, every cloud has a silver lining. So one of the tools that we used uh, for facilitating the conversation with the students, and this is really brought to us uh, later in the program by our friends at University of Maryland, was the use of Google Jamboards. So what we did is we structured Jamboards. Jamboards, if you're not familiar with them, they're, they're kind of like collaborative Google Slides documents, right? They're, um, I mean, everything in Google is collaborative, but the nice thing about Jamboards is that it is intended for multiple people to be in there at the same time. Now, because we were working with a, a serious time difference between the US and the MENA region, uh, the students were sometimes in there at the same time, um, but the nice thing is that the Jamboards were open pretty much 24 seven, so they could all participate as they wanted. So we set up Jamboards, uh, like a Jamboard template, essentially, for each uh, group. And then they had the process of, they had multiple screens or slides where they could um, put in all of their initial ideas and then go through the design thinking process where they filter them slowly uh, over time. So they, but they also had kind of a record of everything that they had done from the beginning. So the first slide was everyone had an opportunity and you could see in the middle of the slide here, it, it looked like a, a bulletin board basically. And each student could put in one or many uh, different ideas of a global challenge that they wanted to, to uh, tackle. And they just put them on as like small little post-it notes on the board. And then in the second slide, they would take those notes and they would rank them into the ones that they were most interested in or kind of interested in. And then they would start to really take the 
list and narrow it down even further by asking them to take the ones that were in there that the group decided they were most interested or very interested in and then kind of derive uh, more topic, almost like research questions out of those specific things. So the Jamboard tool really allowed the students to kind of scaffold their thinking in a way where they were able to collaborate, even if they were asynchronous at the time, and then uh, provide a record of their accomplishments, essentially, so that they could continually refer back to that throughout the rest of the course. This is an example of one project team's um, jam board from the last semester. So you can really see from the very first week, uh, we changed the design of a little bit, it wasn't a bulletin board anymore, but you can see that um, it was really an opportunity for all of the different participants in the team, which could be up to 10 participants, um, to get their ideas out in a very equal way. You know, there's not, I mean, some are a little bit bigger than the other, but that was dealer's choice. Um, so there's a wide range of ideas here. You know, there's some, you know, that are kind of big, like we want to do something that empowers women and girls, but we don't really know exactly what. Um, if you look at the pink one on the left, but if you look at the green one in the middle, you know, it's a lot more concrete. So if someone wanted to do a project on mental health where they could start conversations, understand, hear each other, um, create an open and safe non-judgmental space. So this was really just anything that came to mind. Um, and you could either participate, one thing we really, really liked about the jam board is that you could either participate by saying it out loud to your team and then either the you or the mentor who was facilitating the discussion would then write your ideas into a succinct keynote. Um, or if you were a little bit more hesitant to speak up, you could also just kind of silently contribute your ideas to the jam board and it would still be able to be discussed by the group, um, which we found was really helpful for um, participants who are maybe a little bit more concerned about their English um, and or maybe were just a little bit more shy either way um, to still have a chance to fully participate in the jam board. And then so from week one uh, to get to week two, you basically just copy it and then change the background um, so that you then have the ranking screen. And from there, the mentor can you know discuss all the different topics that are on the first one and arrange them by what you're most interested in, uh, kind of interested in, and you really discover you're not that interested in it. Um, and then you copy it again, get to the third screen, and you take all of the ones from the most interested and you kind of focus them in. And from here is where you really select your final project topic. So you can see that this group decided to go with the mental health keynote. And then the fourth week is the most difficult, um, but also the most useful in my opinion, where you'll have your final sticky note um, and then you go around in a circle. So the top one, you start with your reasons for selection. Um, so, you know, this team chose mental health education and they wanted to do that because people, it was a global issue and it's something that can affect everyone um, and that they have experienced themselves. And then you go big to small. So you start out with your outcomes. What is your goal? This team's goal was what, we want people to know that they're not alone in what they're going through. We want to help others in a simple and comfortable way. And then you say, how can we do that? So we'll talk about the output in the second from the right. So they were thinking about doing a website. They wanted to integrate YouTube videos. They wanted to have a discussion forum. And then they said, okay, how do we achieve those outputs? And you go over to the activities box. So they started to brainstorm activities that would achieve those. So um, one thing that they wanted to do is to talk and agree on deadlines, make sure that they, they had a solid work plan, um, make sure that they were meeting at least once a week. Um, and then finally, on the very far left, the resources and input is what skills or expertise did your team bring? And that's kind of where they decided who would do what, now that they knew what they needed to accomplish. So um, Mustafa and Aiki decided that they would do research, Hala decided that he would do design, and Alexis would be the project manager. So, um, that is one example of a jam board. And you can see from Kim, a uh, Palestinian participant said, during chatting and meetings, there was harmony. And if there's anyone who does not agree about it, he could simply say that. And we discussed his idea. And by voting, we reached our final decision. Jamboard was a fun tool to organize and rank our ideas. And the most activity that involved communication was when we ranked the topics that we put on the first page. And I was just going to jump in and say one more thing about the jam ports that I think, because we conducted NGCN both with and without it. And one of the, I think, changes we saw with, the, sorry, my email keeps going off. Um, one of the changes that we saw 
uh, once we introduced the Jamboards was that I feel like the students were a lot more um, bold about making suggestions. Whereas in a discussion forum, everything that you do is labeled and attached to your name. The Jamboard, you could see who was editing it, but they could also put those sticky notes on there. Not necessarily anonymously, but it gave them a chance to be a little bit more expressive without it being so directly tied to their individual personality. So I think having a forum like that, where it was very much more of a level everybody's in it together kind of space i think really fostered some some deeper discussions in some ways thank you Haley and rob um, i'm going to talk about the pros cons considera considerations and alternatives to the resources that we use the goal of our project was to make sure that um, everything was accessible for our participants we always kept that in mind due to the fact that we have a wide range of participants with various um, bandwidths of availability for internet access. So for all the ones, all the resources we used, we tried to make sure that they were accessible, whether it was inexpensive or, or free, and also um, accessible as an access to the actual platform. So for Cannabis, it was easy to use, as you can see through the modules that were created, and that um, participants from different countries can easily access that page. Um, for WhatsApp, it was a very, it's a common application to, for telecommunications in the MENA region. And that way we weren't um, providing a new function or platform for participants in the MENA region. For the US, you know, participants are familiar with WhatsApp depending on their degree of like exposure to communication, communicating with other people in different countries. But it's something that our, we realized that our participants are able to adjust to. Google Meet, ironically, does not require you to have a Gmail account to have meetings. So and it's also free, so it was um, a great platform to use for the synchronous sessions, and it was also free compared to Zoom Pro. And lastly, for Google Jamboard, it was a great way to have um, different kinds of collaborative participation for our participants, and it also works well with Google Meets because of the cross-sectoral platform. Some cons that we notice is with Canvas, for our first four sessions of this program, we used IUPUI's Canvas platform, which is through the university. Sometimes you encounter issues with IT because of the middleman involved. Um, so to remedy that, we actually hosted the last session, the summer session for MCN through World Learning's Canvas platform. And because Haley and I both work for World Learning, it was easier to um, identify issues immediately with our participants. For WhatsApp, um, we had some privacy issues for some of our participants in Kuwait, mostly Kuwaiti women who did not want to share their contact information. Um, which is understandable because this program is so short and you have people's contact information for an extended period of time. And during the beginning of our program as well, we, we couldn't host group chats. Now we can, I think up to eight participants. For Google Meet, I know a lot of participants preferred Zoom because they were using it for school or other work um, purposes. Um, and sometimes our participants didn't have Zoom Pro accounts. So they, can, they were at a cab for 40 minutes for calls as well. So it varied based on that. And lastly, for Google Jamboard, um, it's an adjustment for everyone. Um, the great idea is that it's a virtual blackboard, so you can add post-its, but adjusting to that structure um, with other platforms that our participants have used for school or work purposes took a bit of time. Some alternatives for our platforms for the LMS is Google Classroom, which I know requires a subscription, so it might vary based on what we uh, compare with Cannabis and Moodle, which is a lower bandwidth version of Canvas, um, which would actually benefit some participants who have um, very low bandwidth. Um, for WhatsApp, we noticed that Slack, Signal, um, as well as um, GroupMe or other alternatives that could be used. Um, some of these are very common in different countries compared to others, and we can also look into that. Another program that I've recently heard of as well is um, Signal, but also there's another one, I can't remember the name of it now, but that requires you to not even show your contact information. You just share your ID number. Um, so that way your personal information is safe. You don't have to give out your uh, phone number. For Google Meet, like we stated, Zoom would be a great platform as well as uh, Skype. But I know Skype isn't popular in some countries too. So um, it would be based on the group. And lastly, for Google Jamboard is OneNote Online but that also requires a Microsoft account. So that might require some participants to create Outlook emails, which might be time consuming. 
And here's a quote regarding um, just the technical um, aspects of the project from Bastoon, an Iraqi participant from the most recent session. He stated, I learned about the cultures of many countries and it was very fun and some interesting things came up. It was a really special course that I benefited from a lot on the cultural, social, and professional levels. I can compare my experience with others that I didn't have good internet, and yet I gave everything I had for the group, even after my laptop crashed. So I think some of the participants are a bit different. For example, they have good internet and good, good laptops, unlike me. And I wanted to really highlight the fact that even if you have great bandwidth, sometimes things happen, and I we really want to address that. You know, we all face these challenges with um, access to technology as well as bandwidth, whether you're in the US or the MENA region. Um, so all, some alternatives that we propose are recording of asynchronous sessions so that participants who had bandwidth issues during the set time they were supposed to meet their group can go back and actually catch up as well. Just to add on to that a little bit is also uh, one thing we noticed in the first semester is that students were getting frustrated with their teammates for not participating um, when we as the project team knew that, you know, they, Palestine maybe just didn't have internet to get access. Um, so starting from the second semester, we started to do announcements on Canvas to let um, our participants know when um, certain other participants were struggling with access um, to kind of just create that awareness that, you know, the internet is not something that everyone can access all the time and that they are committed students, they just couldn't do it that day. Um, so trying to um, kind of do that mental shift for our participants as well. Now, I know we only have a couple minutes left, so um, I would like to open it up for questions now. And I think we have a few. Feel, feel free to use the chat as well. I know some people already asked questions or you can voice now. Thank you. Okay. Anyone, I'm just scrolling through the chat for questions, but if anyone has one, feel free to raise your hand. Ah, here's one. Um, Alistair Jones asks, did you consider the international availability of these technologies for students? Um, so I'll start and anyone else can chime in. Yes, that was definitely one of our main considerations. Um, I think as Nesnet mentioned earlier, you know, we really chose WhatsApp because it was so popular with Armina participants. Um, and they tended to be the American participants who um, had <laughs> troubles or didn't have a WhatsApp account and had to create one. Um, including Canvas um, in that, you know, we did make a shift um, later on to world learnings because it was easier for the um, Iraqi and Palestinian students to access in some cases. Um, so that was definitely one of the top considerations for us. Anyone else would like to chime in? Feel free. I was just going to say that uh, we knew from the outset that uh, the many of our students were going to need mobile centric technologies. So that's why WhatsApp was really, I mean, there's discussion forms built into Canvas. We did use those discussions in Canvas, but I think uh, those are, are more difficult to use on a mobile device. Um, so more of the free form communication really came in the mobile native WhatsApp groups, whereas the discussions in Canvas were treated more as like long form assignments. So I think anytime that you build in opportunities for conversation with your students, you just really need to think about um, like the mobile gave them obviously mobile access, but also restricted a lot of um, or eliminate a lot of uh, bandwidth issues and, and that kind of thing. Whereas Canvas is kind of a heavy ask for someone who doesn't have a reliable internet connection and, and a decent uh, laptop. There's a question in there from Hiva that is, how did you structure the intercultural surveys? And was there a particular framework or model inventory adapted? And so I wondered, Haley, if you would wanna talk a little bit about the Stevens Institute's um, mm -hmm. survey instrument. Yeah, so we, uh, briefly, since I think we're out of time, um, we worked with the Stevens Initiative, who worked with RPI International to help us on all of our monitoring and evaluation efforts. Um, so we had a pretty extensive pre and post program survey um, that, com that compared uh, how they felt they were when they coming in, how they felt they were coming out, and also how they were coming out thought they were going in, um, which I think is called retrospective, but I'm not an expert on that. Um, so we had on a number of different um, 
areas, including, you know, different aspects of intercultural communication. Um, and altogether, yeah, I think that's as much as I could on it. I wish you could ask RTI, but I was just facilitating it. Uh, yeah. Do we have time for one more or are we out of time? I think it goes till 9.50. Um, I think that is it for us. So thank you so much for attending. Um, and I hope you learned something and feel free to reach out to us via email if you have any more questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.